Today, we're covering the design process for making your own custom brushes. We'll start by talking about the brush tip, then about brush settings, and then finally, how to use both of those things to create a specific brush unique to your needs. New digital artists often get caught up in finding cool brushes to try to make their paintings better, and they're often met with the reality that the brushes don't matter all that much. These artists are usually presented with two options. The first and most agreed upon option is to find free brush packs to download. And the second option that isn't often mentioned is how you can just make your own brushes. Okay, so the first step in making a brush is to consider the brush tip or its shape. Now, depending on what you want to accomplish, this can look any number of ways. Although for now, you shouldn't really spend a lot of time perfecting how you want this to look because the tip shape is probably the least important part of a brush. But we need something to start with. Now, although they're called brushes, really what we're working with are stamps. As you drag your mouse or pen across the canvas, it repeats the shape of the stamp at an interval that is either set by you or set dynamically based on the size of your brush. Knowing this, it's important to consider the edge of the brush shape, because if you have any little teeth at the edge, those can potentially stand out in a way that you do or don't want when using the brush, right? It's not a stamp that you smear, it's a stamp that repeats itself at super high intervals to give the impression that it smears. Now while shape is somewhat important, the real magic and heavy lifting happens somewhere else, the brush menu. The brush menu controls every way that a brush can change dynamically. These settings are most commonly linked to pen pressure. The settings can be turned off and on and are often controlled by a curve that you can make as complicated or as simple as you like. The comparison here is how this brush shape that I made transforms into something completely different just by changing a few of these settings. And if we take this absolutely insane brush design and we use similar settings, we end up getting a similar result, which just goes to show that it doesn't really matter too much what your brush tip looks like. All of the heavy lifting is really done in the brush menu. It's that last five to 10% that's the icing on the cake. It's gonna make your brush look exactly how you want it to look, but it's not gonna drive the main function of your brush. Now that we've gone over the basics, we should look a little bit further into this window here. Krita calls these settings sensors, right? These sensors take information from your pen or your tablet and they use it to create a curve that defines how each of these settings perform. So we can see pen pressure, pressure in, tilt, speed, distance, time, etc. I'm going to cover a few of these briefly. Um, I'll go over the ones that I find the most useful, but I'll place an image on the screen as to what all of these do and link to the page where you can find these explanations in the video description below. Okay, so pressure is pretty self-explanatory. It takes the pressure information from your tablet that measures how hard you're pressing on it with your stylus and maps that to a value, which then applies that to whichever characteristic here on the side you're working with. So if we activate size, for instance, and then click pressure and then define the curve here, it will increase the size with an increase in pressure unless we invert the curve to decrease as we reach 100% pressure, in which case the size will decrease as we press harder. Or we could use pressure in, which takes the highest pressure reading of your current brush stroke and uses that to determine the size. So even if you lessen the pressure towards the end, but you still have your pen touching the tablet, it will maintain the highest amount of pressure that you've exerted. This is good if you want a tail at the beginning of a stroke, but not at the end. Fuzzy dab and fuzzy stroke. Select a random value instead of one that you control. Fuzzy dab will apply that value Per dab, which means every time your brush tip repeats itself as you draw, Krita will generate a new value and apply it to whatever characteristic you've set it to. So hue, for instance, fuzzy dab will control color. Selecting a random color for each repeated brush tip within that stroke. While fuzzy stroke chooses one random value and maintains that value for the entire stroke. These two sensors are the most useful for creating hyper-specific brushes. For instance, I have a brush that has value and hue variation controlled by fuzzy stroke, which means that I can choose a color and every time you paint with that color, it'll have some minor variations in value and hue that give it some visual interest. And the curve in these examples sets the boundaries to the randomness. So if I set the maximum to 2% and the minimum to negative 2%, then I have a 4% total range created around my chosen color and value. Okay, so with all that information, let's find a brush stroke that looks cool and see if we can replicate it in Krita. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing here is that there is like no tapering on either end. I'll take note of that in the brush settings. The second thing that I'm noticing is that this is going to be the edge of the brush, right? So if I do that, this is going to match this. So that's going to be important in um, creating this brush here. And then we can also get some information from this edge again, because this is going to be this edge of the brush 
The hardest thing, I think, is gonna be getting this. All this stuff in the middle where there's no ink being applied is gonna be hard because, right, the way brushes work is by repeating a shape. It's gonna be hard to do that um, while still maintaining some empty space inside of it. But we'll see what we can do. So this to me looks like a square brush because uh, if we see this edge down here we have this sharp edge at this corner and this corner as opposed to something more rounded like this and like this. So we're gonna start with the rectangle. Well, I'm gonna change my brush to one that has some more texture to it just to try to get that edge in here. Okay now we've got a blurring problem because I started out too small but we can fix that. Um, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just go back over the edge. Ink depletion. What do you know? Yoink. Okay, let's select our brush tip. Pressure, weight, bristle ink weight, bristle length weight, ink depletion curve weight. What do those things mean? Nobody knows. Cool. Okay, so what we did here was we went to this tab and the engine, it says quick brush, but we're not on quick brush, we're on the bristle engine, which we got by selecting here. And then we chose ink depletion, ink amount, 1048, link to opacity, um, which gets us this, which kind of sucks because I didn't want that opacity, but we're gonna get as close as we can here. And I think it looks better anyway. For size, we don't want that checked at all because this new brush, or this brush that we're trying to copy, maintains the same height the whole time. And then we also had bristle options, and we clicked composite bristles, which gave us this sort of fake generated bristle lines, as if the brush actually has little hairs, which is really nice. And then density. That might be what we're looking for here. Cool. <laughs> we just destroyed it. I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. It's kind of what we want, though. I wonder if we could take this Take that copy paste. And just move it a couple pixels. I mean, if it works, it works. This is what we have right now. It's all right. Let's see how this looks. Not that much of a difference, if I'm being honest. What if we did something a little bit more drastic? Let's take this. Let's go really close here. Okay, so the problem here is that the ink seems to deplete completely, or almost completely, in the middle of the stroke, and then we get some back towards the end. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to mimic that with a curve. Okay, so here we have our curve. So if maximum is completely depleted and minimum is full paint, then we go to almost completely depleted up here, and then we gain some ink back, and then it continues the curve as normal. So let's actually raise this if we can a little bit. And then we'll, we'll test this out and we we'll see if it works. That looks pretty good. I mean, that's, that's almost exactly what we need. Only we can make this part thicker, but I think that's just a limitation of the brush engine, really. Um, if we could have like a weighted bottom versus a weighted top, that would be awesome. Like that. I think I'm gonna make one more change to our brush tip here. Um, before 
or sort of call it. Um, but we're like, we're pretty close to exactly what we wanted. Uh, part of the problem is the brush stroke that I found on Google Images uh, <laughs> is very pixelated and kind of chunky. And our brush is going to be super fine um, because a lot of this chunkiness is just from it being bad quality. But I think we can get a good amount of the way there. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's really, really close. All right, so here's the version that we came up with as compared to this guy up here. Definitely not as chunky, but we got pretty close. I also made some changes based on personal preference. I added some tapering to this one. We can take that away here for a second if we want to. I mean, that's pretty close. The only thing that's bothering me a little bit is I kind of want this section to be filled in, but there's nothing that we can really do about that with the tools that we have in Krita. Yeah, that seems uh, pretty good. Pretty good.